what I mean You too, team, keep it clean You see my boy, he like gotta made it Gotta made it Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven Right and graven a lot of talk recently surrounding Chiefs' current offensive coordinator, uh, Eric Bieniemy. What's going to happen with him? Is he going to get an opportunity as a head coach? Uh, is he going to move to a different team as an offensive coordinator? What is going to happen with Eric Bieniemy? Today, uh, Ian Rappaport, Rap Sheet, he was on the Pat McAfee show, um, and he mentioned Baltimore as a potential landing spot for Eric Bieniemy, but he also did mention few other teams as well let's just listen to the clip uh what about eric the is he still in the running like is any or could any of these teams that these these guys that haven't hired anybody is he gonna get an interview like what's going on he was obviously the last couple off seasons top of the list yeah i haven't heard that he's eliminated from indy so i think there is a possibility that he could be part of the fourth round for many rounds there are but i think the enemy's really in play for a play calling oc job a couple different places you know baltimore the commanders is really one to consider so he mentioned that he's not out of the running when it comes to the Colts it didn't sound like he had the most confidence in Eric Bannerman and the Colts for them linking up but hey you never know and we won't know officially till we know officially but he did name both the Baltimore Ravens and the Washington Commanders uh, as potential suitors for Eric Bieniemy. Um and hopefully I mean don't don't consider that team on that side of the beltway man like really come on now but anyway um, and that would be nice. Y'all know I'm on board with the Ravens bringing on Eric Bieniemy if they were to go that route. Uh, that would be my top pick uh, for offensive coordinator. But so much of the talk, whenever you talk to somebody, uh, not everybody, but a lot of people, enough people, they say, well, oh, Eric Bieniemy, he don't be calling plays, buddy. Why you want him as offensive coordinator? He don't call no plays, buddy. That man don't call no plays. What you want him for? And I hear that and I'm like, I just don't get it. I never have and I never will. If Eric Bieniemy, he's the offensive coordinator of the Chiefs. Say, for instance, he didn't call the plays. Okay, and half the people want the Ravens to hire a, a QB coach to be their next offensive coordinator, a wide receiver coach to be their offensive coordinator. And, and what if th these guys never called plays before? What about that? QB coaches don't call plays. Wide receiver coaches don't call plays. But they want to hire them as offense. And it's like, what? What? I just, I, I never got that. But Ian Rappaport is here to save the day and clear some things up uh, when it comes to Eric Bieniemy and his play calling and also Andy Reid. Let's hear it. And like, so you'd be like, well, he's already an OC. Why would he leave Mahomes? He shares play calling with Andy Reid. I mean, he does a lot of it, but he shares it. Uh, if that's were, breaking say, news again. Yeah. You said this before. That is massive news if that's the case. I think that is out there. I mean, I, I don't because the conversation is always Andy Reid does all the play calling. So when you're hiring, just like no offense to him, Shane Steichen right now over in Philadelphia with Sirianni, uh, you can kind of go around all the head coaches that call plays. Yeah, Kafka over there with Dayball. I don't know if he's calling plays or Day. I think Dayball let him call uh, plays. Yeah. No, no, no. Kafka's calling plays. It's, it's actually pronounced Kafka. And he's calling plays. Oh, okay. Oh, Thank you for that Kafka. correction. The <laughs> but these guys that don't call plays, I think it is automatically like a hit. Like, okay, he's a part of the offense, he is, but Andy Reid's the guy calling the plays. You saying, I think you said this a couple weeks ago, that they're splitting play calling duties. That was news to me. You saying it's already out there, maybe. I feel like we live in this world. I did not know that. Is that true? Is that factual statement? He also does call plays? I just know he, he does a lot. Like, does he physically say the words to the quarterback? Probably not, but I know he's very, very, very involved. But it's different when you're, What's let's say he's a That's phone. calling plays. What's that mean, <laughs> Rap Sheet? So, Ian Rappaport letting it be known that Eric Bieniemy does have a lot to do with the Kansas City Chiefs offense, with the construction and design of their offense, and said he does some play calling as well, uh, and that he sort of splits it when, with Andy Reid. So, I guess Eric Bieniemy has been getting a lot of OJT. Uh, and that is on the job training. Uh, and it, it's always with, with on the job training. That's when you first start out in a position. 
and you you just got to sit with somebody or you got to go out in the field with somebody who's been doing a position uh, for a while, who's been in that position for a while, and they show you the ropes, they show you what it takes, they show you what you need to do, and when you finally start doing it, they are sitting there right there accompanying you. But if Eric B. Enemy were to go off to a new company, a new position, a new team, and be offensive coordinator, it would kind of be a lateral move, but it actually really wouldn't because this would be him spreading his wings all on his own. So it wouldn't be him sharing play calling duties uh, with the head coach. No, it would be him calling the plays, especially if that ended up happening with the Baltimore Ravens. But while he wouldn't be sharing play calling duties uh, with the head coach, this being Harbaugh in this instance, could he possibly be in the runnings to take over, especially if things went well? We always talk about how timing is everything. Uh, my guy, BB, he sent me an email, and I think he probably was watching Pat McAfee's show too. Uh, but he sent me an email. He said, if Ravens hire Eric Bieniemy, would Harbaugh be hiring his replacement as a head coach in 2024? Now, initially when I saw that, I was like, mm, no, like Harbaugh, he ain't going nowhere like even if his seat starts warming up or something that dude is set the, the the leash that he got is so long like he he could wrap it around his arm a bunch of times you know how you do an extension cord when you when you wrapping up the extension cord Harbaugh could do that with the leash that that he got right now because he he, he got so much leeway and so much freedom and I, I just I don't see any scenario where Harbaugh would even be considered to be fired um now Depending on how this whole Lamar Jackson thing goes, then that could change. So we'll see. But right now, the hardball's on easy street, man. That that dude is chilling. He ain't got nothing to worry about at all. Um, but could he go out on his own terms? Uh, or could the Ravens look at Eric Bien and be like, wow, you came here and you did what with us, with our offense? Wow. This is a dream come true. You know what? We know you're known around the league. We know you're respected around the league. Would they give him a shot, though? But let, let's hear what they had to say on the Pat McAfee show about the potential of Eric Bieniemy, uh, especially if he got hired by the right type of coach. Let's say he's the play-calling OC for a defensive head coach like Ron Rivera or for John Harbaugh. It does put him in a little bit of a different category, and it sets him up maybe to be a better head coach in the future, in the minds of the owners, even though I think that's kind of dumb because being a head coach has almost nothing to do with whether or not you call plays. It's all like leadership and such. But anyway, that's kind of where it is now. Now, with that being said, that's the issue with having a defensive head coach. If the enemy goes into any of these places and has success, he's going to be a head coach after one year, and that coach is going to have to re-find another Eric Bieniemy, which seemingly there isn't a lot of. Also, hopefully Bieniemy is a good play caller in the games, yeah. which we have seen some people who have offensive brilliant minds, not necessarily gr uh, great play callers, because it takes a skill to call plays. I think that's always been the thing that fans think about Eric Bieniemy is like, well, Andy Reid's calling the plays, even though a lot of play, uh, players and other people have given him credit for a lot of the creativity and the designing of the plays. The play calling is such a big conversation. But if he's a head coach, you can bring in an offense coordinator to run your offense. Mm, right. Seems like he should get another shot at it. So very, very good points uh, about Eric Bieniemy as an offensive coordinator for a defensive coach. He could have, especially speaking of the Baltimore Ravens, just using him as an example, if he came to the Ravens and had success, immediate success, and really got that offense turned around, especially for a team that's so primarily focused on defense, it would be so many eyes on Eric Bieniemy uh, as a head coach immediately, like right away. So whether that those eyes would be from outside the organization or they would be from within as well, even though... Again, y'all y'all know how I feel. I, I just don't see anybody else other than John Harbaugh being the head coach. Again, unless a lot of stuff changes. Cause then a lot of stuff could change this offseason. We'll see. We won't know until we actually know. Um now they did talk about how this could end up wherever Eric Bienemy does end up going, it could be a one year thing. If he goes somewhere as a uh offensive coordinator, it could be in, in it could end up being a one year show. And for me, if I'm the Ravens I know it sounds scary and I know like you want to think long term like oh man we would we would want this guy here for years to come but I'm I'm not I'm thinking right here right now 
Hey, if it's a one, if, if we got to take the risk of it being a one year show for me, so be it. Reason why? Number eight. Number eight. I mean, it's possible that his show don't even last another season with the Baltimore Ravens. He could be playing in a whole new team this upcoming year. Hopefully he doesn't, but hey, it's the business, so we won't know till we know. But John Harbaugh, Eric DeCosta, they did say they're going to keep Lamar in the plans. They're going to keep Lamar abreast of the situation when it comes to the offensive coordinator and whatnot, keep him involved and whatnot. So if I'm the Ravens, if I talk to Lamar say, hey, look, I, I know you probably don't want to sign with us right now. I know we, we got a lot of stuff to prove to you. We, I mean, we done had like four or five years to prove it to you. We ain't take advantage of a lot of stuff. But anyway, we're here now. So, Eric B. Enemy, how you feel about him? H how do you feel about his offense? What do you think he could do uh, for you, for us, and, and just this whole franchise? How do you feel about that, Lamar? And if Lamar was on board, I, hey, I'm doing everything I can to bring in Eric B. Enemy. Every single thing that I possibly can to bring in Eric Bieniemy, because if Lamar Jackson is your franchise quarterback, like you say he is, you should do everything to keep him. And this would be just another step in the process. And this would be a great step in the process for me. I, I would love if they went in the direction of an Eric Bieniemy. But we, again, won't know until we know. So we'll keep on waiting. We'll keep on watching. Um, and just. I guess Ravens will figure it out. They'll figure it out. Um, it's funny because uh, one of my guys, he tweeted to me earlier. And he was like, oh, he, he was listening to 105.7 The Fan uh, early today. And he said that uh, Marty Morningweg was on there. And Marty was saying that um, the Ravens are probably going to hire from within. Uh, let me see. That was my guy, my guy Ernest. My guy Ernest J. He said, uh, Engraven, listen to 105.7 The Fan. Marty Morningweg is setting up. He's saying that he wouldn't be surprised if the Ravens went in-house for offensive coordinator. Run it back. Um, and I told him, yeah, I don't really think anybody would be surprised if they did that. They, they love to hire from within when it comes to, I mean, a lot of positions. Sometimes it can be good. Sometimes it's not so good. Um, but with, with Greg Roman, he was the, uh, I think he was the run game coordinator. Well, he was a tight end coach slash run game coordinator, something like that. And then he got promoted to offensive coordinator. That worked out initially, initially. But again, it had that, that two-year ceiling. Then after that, it, it, that was it. So it worked out initially. From, from the jump, it worked out. But it, it wasn't a long-term thing. Um, but anyway, I, I, just, I wouldn't be surprised if they hired from within. I would much rather prefer that they go on the outside. They, they, they hire somebody from, without, from the outside just so they can inject some life into this thing. I don't want it to be a continuation of the same old stuff. And again, like I've been saying for the longest, whoever they hire, um, I would hope that the philosophy gets updated as well. But again, that's one of those things we won't know till we know. But bringing somebody from the outside in, that could be a start, especially depending on who it is. But that could be a big start uh, to really trying to fix the issues with the Ravens offense. So we just got to wait it out, baby, and see how it goes. But anyway, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. Shout out to Graven.